So I'm Efwa Traore, and these are my books. Um, I wrote Children of the Quicksands. I'll talk to you today about Children of the Quicksands. Um, first of all, does anybody know what Quicksands is? It's a type of like sand that's really watery, and if you step inside and you move or struggle, you get deeper inside, and you may be lost and you can die. Exactly. The more you struggle, the more you get sucked in. So I'll read you. I'll read a section of the book. So just just before the part, um, I'll read. Her grandmom, who, who everybody in the village calls Yanla, told her to go um, into the village and pluck ube. Simi snatched the basket from the table outside and walked past the herb garden and through the little gate. She stood in the middle of the path and looked around. A tiny stream, almost overgrown with grass and other water plants, trickled alongside the path. To the right, the path looked wider and more used. To the left, it was barely visible, and after a few meters, it disappeared into thickets, a thicket of ferns and bushes. Just as she was about to turn right towards the village, as Iyanla had instructed her, Simi thought she heard a strange sound and stood still. She listened, cocking her head towards the forest. There it was again, a quiet, vibrating melody that rippled through the air, reminding her of winds swishing over the distant sands of Lekki Beach back home. It was gripping. Her nerves tingled strangely in her body, and the next moment it was gone, and she wondered if she had really heard it. She realized that without noticing, her feet had actually taken her towards the left and into the forest. Suddenly she heard laughter, a high-pitched screaming laugh, clearly that of a monkey. How amazing! She felt like a National Geographic reporter right at the source of nature in the middle of the wilderness. Curiosity took over and she decided to peek further into the forest. She would take only very few steps. Her heart pounded at the thought of seeing some cute monkeys, real live monkeys in the wild. At least she would have something to report at school after the holidays. Her friend Taye had flown to her cousins in America and Chinwe had gone to Enugu where her parents had their family home. She was the only one who had to spend her holidays in the wilderness. She picked up a long stick she found at the side of the path. She definitely didn't want to collide with snakes or any other wild animals without some form of protection. She was not going to be unprepared like some helpless, naive city girl. Just a few steps, she thought. The forest was not even as dense as it looked at first glance. The narrow path snaked around huge tree trunks with thick, gnarled roots that dug into the ground. She could see pretty far through the bushes and treetops, but there were no monkeys swinging from branch to branch, no dark caves or hills or anything even half as exciting. The forest remained absolutely boring. She looked back and could no longer see her grandmom's house, only the greens of the forest around her. Suddenly she felt foolish standing in the middle of the jungle with a stick in her hand and wondering what had made her to do such a reckless thing. She shook her head and was just about to hurry back when she heard a creaking noise behind her. She turned and found herself staring into the yellow eyes of a grim-faced, ragged-looking man. He sat on a heavily laden, rusty bicycle, plantains piled up in a big basket behind him. She jumped backwards on shaky legs to let him pass. Akuirole, she greeted him when she found her voice again. He didn't reply. He just looked at her with those yellow eyes and muttered something which sounded like the madness. His voice sounded rough, as if he seldom used it. You should not be here, he said. You must go home. Then he shook his head before he continued riding his rusty bicycle along the uneven forest path. A shiver ran down Simi's spine, and she noticed how the burst of energy that had made her so adventurous seep out of her bones. 
She turned to walk back when she heard the strange melody again. It began like the sound of a vibrant wind scattering sands. But then the swishing sound grew louder, gathering into a high rippling tune. It was bird song, so beautiful and so haunting that she stood motionless, her feet glued to the spot. The tune continued, persistent and urging, and Simi felt sure that it was calling her. She turned, her feet moving in the direction of this song, and she left the main trail, passing through bushes that scratched her legs. Somehow, she couldn't stop walking. The forest around her began to change. It became denser. The air grew heavier and more humid with each step. The trees higher and the undergrowth thicker. Long vines hung down from the tall trees, almost touching the ground. Only ten more steps, then I'll turn back, she thought. But she kept going. Only twenty more steps. At some point, she couldn't tell how many steps she had taken. She finally came to a standstill in the middle of a clearing and drew in a sharp breath. In front of her lay a dreamy little red lake. In the middle of it was a gray rock, its smooth surface glowing in the fading light. A tall tree stood at the edge of the lake and leaned over it as if to protect the water below it. It was an Iroko. She saw that at once, the tree of spirits. She looked up and saw a bird sitting in the branches of the Iroko. She instinctively knew that this was the bird that had lured her here. Even though it was so high up, she saw its shiny gold plumage clearly through the leaves. How had it managed to bring her here? She felt as if she was standing beside herself, as if she had lost control over her own body. And now she had the insistent feeling that something was about to happen. The air seemed to crackle. As she watched the bird, it left the treetop, fluttered to the rock and sat upon it. The movement was quick and ghostly, like a reflection against the dark background of the forest. Its beady black eyes glittered as it stared at her. She understood immediately the bird wanted her to come. And even though she wanted to run back to Iyanla's house as fast as possible, she could not control her feet. She put one foot in front of the other and moved towards the lake. So that's all I'm going to read to you. If you want to know what happens, you have to get the book. Um, yeah, first of all, has anybody been in a forest before? No. You've been in one? No? How do you imagine a forest is? A place with lots of trees, bushes, and some dangerous animals. No. Um, what do you think will happen next in that scene? I think that uh, at the edge of the lake, there would be quicksand and she would sink into it. What do you think will happen after that? Anybody have an idea? If this was your story and you were writing it, what would you make happen? That when she enters the quicksand, she will come out and then the bed will just fly on top of her and then she goes back home. Okay. When she goes into the quicksand, she sees eyes, and then she looks into it. It looks like it's a small child. Yes. Like maybe when she sinks into the quicksand, like there's something in it. Like, um, like at first she won't be able to breathe inside the quicksand. Like she will go through it. And there'll be something in it, maybe like a room or like a place, like okay. in the quicksand. Okay, I think where the bird is guiding, where the bird is guiding her to. Okay. 
I think we got very close. Something like that might actually happen. So, um, has anybody actually tried writing a story before? Yeah? Did it work out? Okay. So, how did you go about it? Was it in school or did you do it on your own? On your own? Okay. Okay. That's nice. When I was little, I actually never had the idea to write. And now, as a grown-up person, I'm wondering, why didn't I start writing back then? I mean, I would have had maybe 20 books by now. So, yeah, if you're interested in writing, definitely try to just think of ideas you find funny or, or weird or, or exciting. And then just think of a person and that they're doing this thing or going somewhere and something happens to them. And you might just end up writing a whole book on your own. I just saw there's a, a little, a young girl there who wrote a book on her own. I was quite impressed. Okay, um, I have some books here. If someone wants to have, who answered all those questions? If you want, you can have some books here. I'm um, here, some books too. Anyone? Ah, yeah, you want a book? Who else? Did anybody else answer a question? Did I forget anyone? Then I'll just... Okay. Thank you, kids. Efua Traore is a Nigerian-German author who grew up in a small town in Nigeria. For as long as she can remember, her head was filled with little stories, but it was not until much later that she began to write them. Children of the Quicksands is her debut novel, which won the Times and Chicken House Children's Fiction Competition in 2019. She lives in Munich with her husband and three daughters. See a cradle, children's book.